Everything you know and love is canceled. All that and more on Wumpa Time. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Wumpa Time. My name is Kane Guy, and I am joined by the canceled... Uh, I'm canceled, Shemp. Hello. Canceled, Shemp. I'm canceled, Canadian, and this is canceled, Shemp. I'm canceled, so... Guy A. Canceled. Yeah, I am canceled, Guy A. That's why, you know, just so I can maintain the CGE, you know, nickname. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Yeah. So other than literally everything uh, with you having any form of human interaction with literally anybody being absolutely canceled, uh, there is some news for the quick news and then we'll get into the main news today. But for quick news, we're going to start off with talking about a possible like strong sources are saying that Sony might be doing Silent Hills reboot slash revival. And I'm assuming that's going to be with Norman Reedus. Yeah, well, if they do a Silent Hills revival, yes, it would be with Norman Reedus. Um, and it's so there's talks to where it's a reboot of the series plus a revival of Silent Hills. So I don't know if Silent Hills mm. is going to be the reboot or if they're going to be two separate things. But all I know is if Sony's involved, it could be a PlayStation exclusive, which is really good for, you know, a PS5 title. Um, mm -hmm. And. There were talks of Konami focusing on a horror game, but I highly doubt that... Uh, did I say Konami or Kojima? You said Konami. I met Kojima. Oh my god, it's yeah. been a long week. Kojima's in talks has been talking about doing a horror game recently, so people are saying that Kojima might be doing the Silent Hills reboot again, but there's no way that he would be working with Konami again, I doubt, unless it's through yeah. Sony. Um, I think that would be a really, really, I mean, Konami really, really like gypped him pretty bad. Like they, um, they really, really, uh, like remember the award that he won that he couldn't go up and accept. Yeah. And everyone, and everyone was like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, where is he? Where is the mastermind Kojima? He's yeah, at home. Um, and he's like, uh, you know. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I think that's a pretty definite no that he would be working with uh, Konami again. Um, I think it's more along the lines that uh, maybe Konami doesn't want to work with him because, I mean, they, they treated him so badly and then he left and then made, like, you know, such an epic, like, Death Stranding without Konami's help at all. And yeah, now that... Konami, it'd be a pride thing now, you know? Yeah, and um, if it's not Kojima, I still have good hopes for this because it. Uh, mm -hmm. The sources do say that the the front runners of the old Team Silence are coming back to do the whole reboot revival. Plus, some of the team members from Team Siren, who did the game Siren on the PS2, which was from the mm -hmm. team that that was part of Team Silent. Hmm. Well, I mean, if they're bringing everybody back, um, why was uh? Oh, did it fall through, the original one fall through, because it was being done through uh, Konami, and Kojima and Konami had a fall through, falling out? Yes. Is that it, what happened? It, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a game by Kojima, and it had Doran Reedus and Gael Del Toro and everyone in there, uh, but once everything started going down, yeah, Konami was like, oh, I'll just cancel it, you know, there's no saving it. I think, I think the thing is, there was no real progress done on the game. I think they focused heavily on the PT demo. Uh, that's right. where that, that was mainly a concept demo. They didn't have any real work done, so they released right. that, and it was like, oh, let's cut our losses. Like, there's no work done. We'll just we'll just cut it and make a pachinko machine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that 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 was not good. Uh, speaking of not good, hey, segue. Uh, do you like lies? <laughs> 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 Hot, steaming, fresh lies. <laughs> Do you like lies? Dude, I could go for a lie right now. Uh, Google Stadia, you remember them? Oh, boy, here we go. Bro, I, dude, it has been a while. I'm craving that Stadia news. So, uh, Doom go. Eternal comes out next week. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the big marketing things for Google Stadia was, yeah, you, you're going to want to play Doom Eternal on the Google Stadia. Because, one, there's no console. You can play it anytime. And it's true 4K, 60 frames per second. You don't even need a computer. You just play it. And it's 60 frames. That's a lie. There is no 4K. <laughs> that is an absolute lie. Like, reports have come out that say, yeah, this is not 4K. And Google was like, I don't know. It's 4K to us. What yeah, it did looks they good. did they bring out? Is it like 2160 or no? I don't even think it's like sub 
sub 2K. I think it's still 1080p. I don't know if oh, any, I don't know if any <laughs> game on Stadia does 4K. Cause like I was about to say if they're trying to go for like stretched out 2K, it's like okay, you, you can say 4K, but it's not like I'll true even take 4K. checkerboarding, dude. Checkerboarding 4K, but it's 1080p. Oh, dude. <laughs> well, like remember when we like a long time ago when we were talking about how Chromecasts were basically melting because of the 1080p. <laughs> Do you think it could work on a 4K screen? With Doom? <laughs> With Doom? Dude, there's going to be more me- Like, come on, dude. Oh, it's great. I just, I can't believe that. I'm so happy to see the Stadia fail. I really, I am. <laughs> it's like, it's it not mean. just for us to talk about. It's just like, no. oh, you had it coming. <laughs> It's like, you know, you had it coming. It's like, you were arrogant from the beginning. Like, everyone was screaming. Like, again, recently, uh, companies have been listening to what fans have been wanting, and it's been resulting really good results in terms of even films or games or whatnot. And people are coming forward and said, hey, we don't like this. And people are now (laughs) receiving being like, okay, we understand. We're going to make changes like they did with the Sonic movie and along with other games, et cetera, et cetera. But when Stadia announced their whole selling ploy, like I got what they were trying to do. It's like, okay, what's your marketing point? How are you going to sell this? How are you? What is their dude? What what is their target demographic? I never thought about that. Their target demographic, literally, there's only I can tell you their target demographic. It is the most niche, smallest demographic. It's I want to be a gamer. I live in a major city like L.A. Or, you know, someone ridiculous. I have money coming out my butthole. Um, and <laughs> it's, I can a, afford... it's a disease, help. Yeah, it's a disease, help me. <laughs> um, they have money literally falling out of their buttholes with um, don't, not wanting to invest into a console. That is the, Because that is literally the only way to have a fully optimized Stadia setup is being able to afford ridiculous internet, like ridiculous yeah like like your area can't even handle it and yet you're still paying for it yeah yeah like you're you're like almost needing to be on your own server you need to be like i don't really want to buy a console but hey i want to play in 4k and and maybe you're like a minimalist there you go yeah you're just like i don't want clutter well i I remember one of their big demographics was like yeah we're going to target people who play games on their phone and they want the console experience on their phone guess what it only works on google phones yep that's it (laughs) great i awesome i don't i don't know man i think i 100 percent see the thing is i really think this is a good concept but i 100 percent believe that this wouldn't have been such a dumpster fire if they didn't market it as the console killer the next best thing like we've yeah. said before playstation advertises playstation now as hey it's there if you want it it's there we know we can't do backwards compatibility but guess what here's a service with a bunch of free games on it for like 16 bucks a month Go ahead, exactly. man. It's whatever. Google's like, nah, this is the next big thing. Oh, yeah. Well, the biggest thing that killed it for me, and I think this was the, the final nail in the grave in the coffin, because it was, like I said, they had an opportunity to make a huge swing in saying, hey, if you buy the game on Stadia, it's at a cheaper rate. No, yeah, okay. no, this is now, full price games. It, they're full price games. They're full price games. Like if they turn around and said, "Yeah, you can buy the game for sixty bucks, or you could buy it on Stadia for forty bucks, brand new." Now Ooh. all of a sudden you're like, "Okay, now I'm getting why you would buy Stadia." Okay, I get it because if you bought one game per month, you'd be saving ten bucks a month, right? It's like, what if okay. it was like a subscription service? Like, do you think that would have like honestly got it traction? Probably, but then it would just why why would you compete with that with uh, Game Pass and PlayStation Now? It's the same thing, right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, because you don't it, need it, a PlayStation to to do PlayStation Now. Right, exactly. You don't need a PlayStation for PlayStation Now, and you don't need an Xbox for Xbox Game Pass. I was streaming Ori from the Game Pass earlier today. It was great. It was fantastic, and uh, uh, it, it it just it doesn't make sense. It's not good. And uh, it is an absolute 
uh, Warzone, especially within the Warzone. Reddit. Warzone. Yeah, Warzone. Did someone yeah, say Warzone? Warzone segue. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is an absolute war zone in the Stadia Reddit. It's hilarious. If you want to go and oh have a laugh, oh my god, yes. Go to oh, our yes. Stadia and just watch people like cry over their investment. But speaking of Warzone, segue, Warzone. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I, I have Call a, a Call of Duty. I, I've actually played this. I, I can actually. I can actually talk about this. Okay, um, go ahead. Dad, do you know about Call of Duty Warzone? I know of it. I haven't played it yet, though. Cool. It, uh, for those of you who don't know, it is the free-to-play Battle Royale mode for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, um, mm-hmm. the new one. Now, you don't need the game, uh, but if you download Warzone, you're essentially downloading the game because that thing is an 80-gig download. Um, so yeah, makes sense. If you want to play it on PC, you need the Battle.net launcher. Ugh, I know. But you, <laughs> you download it, and then you literally... There's one map right now, but it's huge, and you pay. You play with, like, up to 150 people, I think. 150? Wow. Yeah, it's it's big. But uh, it's... We're bringing it up because uh, the player base hit a peak, like, a steady peak of 6 million active players in the first 24 hours and That's it just insane. it just stayed like that and that is also um cross play so that's pc xbox one mm-hmm. and ps4 uh t- six million active players for an entire day that's more than uh fortnite by the way that's more yeah. than fortnite in terms of uh size that is that is actually like insane and to be able to and uh the, 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 now, this feeds into another thing that we're going to be talking about later on, about a leak that came out, quote-unquote. Um, yeah, ooh, <laughs> there's, there's a uh. lot of things to talk about on this one. So, uh, but the fact that it's really interesting that they decided to go for the free-to-play for Battle Royale, uh, especially like for a game that's that you have to pay full price for, and they're like, hey... Here's the war zone. You don't even need the full price game if you just want Battle Royale. And I think I it, it sounds like it's an incredibly smart move thus far. Oh yeah, dude. It is it like because when you buy Modern Warfare, you are getting the campaign and the extensive mm-hmm. beefy multiplayer. And this mm-hmm. is literally one map so far with one mode and it's completely free. So it gives you a taste of the game and it mm-hmm. tells you, "Hey, if like so on the battle.net launcher, it's not like Steam. It's literally just Blizzard's uh, launcher for the couple of games they have. So when you right. download it on the side, it just says, oh, Warcraft, Starcraft, Overwatch, uh, mm-hmm. Hero- Heroes of the Storm, remember that? And then right. at the bottom, it says Black Ops 4 and Modern Warfare. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, they, they replaced the icon for Modern Warfare. It just says Warzone now. So if you want to download Modern Warfare, you need to download that first, which is smart because it gets people right. in the game already. Uh, I played it. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Call of Duty, but s- someone I work with is like a massive fan of Modern Warfare, and I was like, "All right, I'll play with you." Mm-hmm. And uh, we played. I had fun with them, and we got uh, we got first place on our first match. So I was <laughs> like, "Okay, I guess we're good." <laughs> I, uh, wow. Uh, all right, cool. But yeah, I mean, if you want, dude, can you imagine all of the all of the kids downloading this like i don't need to oh, i don't yeah. need an idea to buy this game i could just download it exactly exactly and you know what and I, i'm going to give credit where it's due i know it, i you know i'm about to say something that's a bit hypocritical that people are going to lose their mind but we got to give credit where it's due activision recently with their online stuff and their uh their i guess their ethics recently has been pretty good Take note, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, look at CTR, free content for like eight months, for like six months, and there's still more content coming. They're just slowing it down. Um, and now they release, hey, here's Call of Duty Warzone. They took away the battle pass for multiplayer in Warzone. Yeah. And, uh, are, are, are in uh, multiplayer mode. I'm not sure if they have, do they have a battle pass in Warzone? Yeah, there's a battle pass in Warzone. Right, but it's uh... free. Yeah, it's free. I don't really fully understand it because I never paid attention to it, but I believe it's free. You can buy it if you want, but you still get free yeah. content. Yeah, you still get free content, but that's how the that's how Fortnite. If it's free to play, then it's kind of like okay, you know, the microtransactions. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, of, yeah, you get it right. But the fact that they decided like, okay, here is the base game where there's very little or no microtransactions, and now here is the battle royale where yes, there is microtransactions, but it's free, and that's a very very good business move. Uh, by Call of Duty. Um, and speaking of an 
odd business moves in general. Fantastic business like, move. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't really gaming news, but I know, <laughs> I know a lot of you out there who watch this channel are actually wrestling fans, specifically of WWE or AEW or whatever it is. Now, we don't talk about wrestling. Shemp isn't too much of a big wrestling guy, but but we witness probably <laughs> one of the funniest, <laughs> weirdest things ever. I think so this of, is the peak. I don't think there's anything that's going to top this. Like this, I was watching, I'm like, this is, wow. So, okay. Um, we all know, like I said, at the start of the stream, everything is canceled. Um, if you have any social gathering, that's more than three people. Uh, the FBI breaks your door down, uh, covers you <laughs> in hand sanitizer and separates you for 48 hours. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. I'm kind of joking. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, everything's because of the coronavirus. We know what's going on. I don't need to report the coronavirus. You, you, you guys have heard it in every single news outlet. You don't need the to what? hear it here. You've heard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so as you know, WWE has a live audience with about like anywhere between like 4,000 to like 6,000 people. Oh, and that course, made it better. <laughs> yeah, that so, made it better. So the thing is, is that of course, during the coronavirus issues, um, they're telling people, "Hey, you can't group up together. You can't. You can't do that because you're going to get sick." So, uh, WWE airs. They're like, "Hey, you know what? Whatever. We'll continue with the show with no audience." <laughs> oh my gosh! We watched a wrestling match with no audience. <laughs> It, it was it, it it felt like a WWE 2K game and you just turn oh. off the crowd but it, the best it, part is when is when like the the commentators are talking to each other seriously and one of the wrestlers is like is that what you want is that what you want yeah. right there and he's like hey, I think he's yelling at you yeah yeah they're screaming at like the it was great because you know the wrestlers they turn to the audience and the audience cheers or boos right there's no one to cheer or boo so they turn to the announcers and they're like trying to either pull cheers or heat from the announcers and it's like this is just it's like acapella wrestling that's the best way to describe it, yeah. it is, and the worst part is that you can hear because you know uh when you're in a, a studio or when you're in a ring of like 5,000 people screaming and cheering, they put mics underneath the wrestling board so that you can hear the impact, makes it sound heavier and stuff like yeah. that. But the whole point is that you're trying to get those sound effects through, you know, 3,000 people cheering, right? That, and yeah, that makes sense. But they still have the mics on with no one there. So all the drops sound so exaggerated. It, like someone <laughs> drops an elbow and it sounds like eight <laughs> tons of bricks are being dropped in the middle of the ring. And while, meanwhile, the commentators aren't like yelling like they usually are. They're just kind of like, yeah, so it looks like he did that. Uh, he did that move that's really good. He's really known for. I think he's yelling at you. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh, now he's was... looking at us. So, yeah, the best thing to do is just go to the WWE YouTube channel. There's a whole bunch of videos they posted. Uh, one specifically was uh, Jeff Hardy versus King Corbin. Go check it out. It is funny. It is so weird because, you know, like they win, they throw their hands up in the air and they're like, yeah, I won. And there's no one there. It's like, <laughs> it's like, the, remember that moment from the Sonic film where, you know, I did it. I did it. He has his hand yeah. up in the air and no one's I there. Did it. Yeah, that, oh. that's, ex that's exactly what it's like. It's like, wow, all, this is really and, depressing to watch. And then both wrestlers go to stalk their families that, that don't know that they're there. <laughs> yeah, basically it's, it's really bad. Speaking, Speaking of, bad. of really bad, oh, oh, bad. Man, man. oh, bad, oh, <laughs> so we're both we're gonna segue into oh boy, oh boy, something that I'm gonna be talking about on Monday because man, oh man, am I, I I'm got so excited. Words. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh yeah, that you lead like this it, one. You man. know, you know more than me about. Oh, this. do I ever? I've been man. <laughs> Man, I have been doing nothing but talking about this and ranting and losing my mind. So, there is a channel which I am not going to hate. Uh, <laughs> they're doing their thing, and that's cool. Um, they are known for leaks. Now, they are specifically known for their Call of Duty leaks, so Activision in general. 
Yeah, they're the Activision leaker. They're the Activision leaker, quote unquote, right? I'm sure now you know where this a, is going. <laughs> yeah, so they run a channel with almost 300,000 subscribers. So they got a viewer base, definitely way bigger than mine and Shemp's combined. And uh, they come out with a quote unquote leak on March 12th at 2.41 p.m. And this, and they go on Twitter, and this is what they say Some Activision games in the works. Tony Hawk Pro Skater Remastered, which we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, I have some stuff about that. Yeah, we do. Call of Duty 2020, codename Project Zeus. Yeah, duh. Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. A free-to-play COD game from Sledgehammer Games, which I had said earlier, referring back to the Warzone. A PvP Crash game. And Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex Remastered. Uh, oh there it is. boy! Okay. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, quick breakdown of the first things: Tony Hawk Pro Skater Remastered. I do think there is going to be a Tony Hawk game coming. I don't think it's going to be a remaster. Um, I think that that's a, something missed in translation because they're bringing in songs from different bands. I'm like, well, if it's a remaster, why wouldn't they? Uh, why wouldn't they use the same music as before? Maybe. Um, well, my and- thing is like, I-, I saw that too, but, um, what if like, not what if, but I thought the license expired with the Tony Hawk pro skater franchise. Cause I it remember when did? pro skater five was the last one. Was that it? Yeah. It yeah. Pro bad. skater five. They, they just kind of dumped it out, uh, with like yeah. what, maybe a month of development time because the license was expiring. And I yeah. thought that was why they needed to capitalize on it before it went away. Yeah, no, it was, it was bad. So I don't know how they're going to do it. They might be doing like a, just a pro, just call it pro skater. And yeah, just they do the modern do, warfare thing where you just call yeah. it the same name. Yeah. Call it the same name, but don't have the Tony Hawk name to it and just change the name. Make sure it doesn't have Tony Hawk in it. Right. If that's, what's going to be happening. Uh, oh, that's <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Sorry. Corona. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so call of duty 2020, which we all know that's, it's a game that's oh, wait, wait, 2020. Wait, wait. 20, 2021. Uh, you're, is it 2021 or 2020? He says Call of Duty 2020. What? What? Well, oh. because Modern Warfare 2 came, or Modern Warfare uh, came out at the end of 2019, remember? Well, yeah, but I'm thinking like Warzone just came out, and wouldn't that like... Uh, think of it like the YouTube algorithm. You, you release one the same year, and then you release another one, and the other one just kind of like drop ships... I, I don't know. I don't know what's uh, going whatever. on with that. <laughs> whatever. So, uh, a Modern Warfare 2 remastered, which has been in the uh, talks for like a year and a half now. So, I mean, anyone could talk about that. A free-to-play COD game from Sledgehammer Games that's supposed to release in 2021 ETA, which, yeah, sure, that's plausible. Yeah. I mean, if they got if they have Warzone, if they have Warzone go free-to-play, yeah, that's entirely possible. But now we come down to... to Two games that I am oof, okay. A PvP crash game. Yeah. So what a what what a, <laughs> a player versus player crash bandicoot game and crash bandicoot the wrath of cortex remastered. Now I'm gonna rewind a little bit to the a P- PvP crash game. Yeah, I want to talk th- about that. Yeah, here's the thing, and this is something that somebody had said, and I was just like, okay, that kind of makes me feel a bit better. Technically speaking. Crash Team Racing Nitro Field is PvP. Okay, because when you say PvP, I think of, like, old-style PvP. Right, yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I'm thinking World of Warcraft in a server, running Run around, scaling each other. <laughs> right, that, that that's what I'm thinking, MMORP, uh, you know, PvP. But then someone said, hey, CTR is considered PvP. And I was like, okay, so if this is CTR 2, or whatever, yeah, I, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with well, that. Wouldn't, yeah. they, wouldn't they just label it uh, like Crash Kart Racer? Like it's so weird to call it Crash PvP. I don't know. And, and now here's the thing: there's two sides to this coin. There's two sides to this coin. One is a very happy, very joyous, very giddy side, and the other side is a dread. Why is this happening? Please kill me and degut me. Is Crash Bash? Oh no! I didn't even think about that, dude. You th- you throw barrels at each other. You, uh, you try to kill each other. You're trying to get first place. That sounds a lot like PvP, doesn't that's it? That's a lot. That's a pretty big PvP if I've ever heard one. Right. So that's but that uh, that's fifty fifty. That's fifty fifty. Yeah. 
Let's like, talk. Uh, okay, oh, okay first ahead? off, yeah, yeah, I'm about to say, if, if I can if, I can see Activision doing a Crash Bash remake or a CTR-style Crash Bash where they keep adding new stuff, because Activision has their own Mario. They're going to treat it like their own Mario. So what does right. Mario have? A kart racer and a party game. What did Crash have back then? Oh, a kart racer and a party game. We need a party game for the new age stuff, so why not just remake it or make another one? Um, but I, when I heard PvP... I, do you remember the old, like when Sierra was still the owner of Crash, when they had yeah. the Crash Bandicoot World website where you'd make your own Bandicoot and then jump oh, around gosh, like yeah. a 2D JPEG Bandicoot? That's what yeah. I thought of. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully it's it's not that. Now, here's the thing is that the only way that I can see like Crash Bash being a thing is that if a third company steps in and develops it and makes it either free to play or a mobile app. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. That that's where that's what but but there's more there's more let's mm. get to the meaty meaty delicious terrible part Crash Bandicoot the Wrath of Cortex remastered um can I say something yeah, of course no no? <laughs> no just no so what yeah my 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 um my stance on this is for those of you who haven't seen it. I uploaded a video about Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, which is probably the exact same situation. Um, for, if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go watch it. But in that game, or in that video, I say, listen, this game has its fans. Crash Wrath of Cortex does it also. But both games did not do that well compared to the other games, given the fact right. that Wrath of Cortex released on three consoles. So. Right. It would not make financial sense for a game with already a bad rap to get remade because people right. are going to see that and be like, oh, that game sucked. I don't want to play that. Anymore. I don't want to play it again. It's just right. still going to be bad. And to be fair, yeah, it's probably still going to be bad because personally, I know the game has its fans, but that level design, the whole game structure with all the vehicles and stuff, that wasn't a crash game. It was just yeah. a, all right, uh, let's throw a dart at the bulletin board. All right, dune buggy, make that a level. Yeah, that 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 definitely it felt like that a lot of times. There were like select moments that were decent, but select moments that are decent is not worthy of a remake. Yeah, uh, those are moments that, like I said in the video, take from that game and put it into a new game. Don't right. remake it. Take good concepts from the bad game and then implement it in the new good game. Right now, the gaming revolution continues. Um, and this is uh, well, the, he he comes out. Uh, Mott Wera, uh, I'm sure you know Mott Wera. Uh, oh, yes. Mott Wera is somebody who is, just for those who don't know, is someone who is huge in the Crash Bandicoot fan base. He runs Crashy News. He's a moderator over on the Crash Reddit. Uh, big, big Crash guy. And he had came forward and kind of was like trying to not deconfirm it, but cr trying to like get clarification. Like trying to say like, well, that's not what we've been hearing because there's been a lot of rumors beforehand talking about this and none of these rumors that I've talked about this pointed to a Wrath of Cortex remake. And the gaming revolution doubled down and said, no, 100%, it's a Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex remaster. So I, I don't know, he, man. He, he doubled down. And then he released another tweet later on. He released another tweet. And he said, quote, update on the earlier tweet. Now we're going to read, it's two tweets, it's a two-part tweet. And uh, that remember that PvP game? Yeah, you're about to get confused again. Ready? Oh, Here we go. God. <clears throat> Crash 4, the Wrath of Cortex Remastered, is expected to be the next big Activision game to release. Stop. Yep. Stop. Yep. Uh, next is the free-to-play COD game made by Sledgehammer Games is going to be available on console, PC, and mobile devices. Of 2021 ETA. And the follow-up is... The Crash PvP game is still in its early days and expected to release in 2021, although it could change. It will also be available on console, PC, and mobile. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, my God. They're treating Crash like... like I. It's so weird that Crash and Call of Duty are getting the same structure. It, right. uh, like That is such a weird design uh, philosophy. So, first things first. And I came forward and I had been saying it from the beginning, pump the brakes on this quote unquote leak. Pump the brakes. Yeah, let's, Hit, sl let's slow down. Slow down here. Number one, what this person is saying, 
that within from the release of 2017 till 2021, we would have four Crash Bandicoot games. So this four. PvP one, like, if they're doing the same structure as the Call of Duty game, it would have to be free, right? Something like that, maybe. I don't know. But they're saying that they want to bring it to PC, console, and mobile. This is where I'm not... I am not getting this. This is not making sense at all. And then a remake on top of that? Hold the phone. Hold the Okay, so you're telling me that Vicarious Visions has been putting three years Mm -hmm. into another remake. And here's the thing, and this is something that doesn't make sense either, is that there's a whole slew of things that are actually kind of debunking this. So I'll get to that in a second, but I just want to say these other things, little details first. Number one, do you remember that PlayStation um, Get Ready to Play ad with yeah. CTR in it? There was a lunar mask floating behind Coco. Yeah, I remember that. Right? There, there's no mask like that in Wrath of Cortex. There's That's an, a completely so, unique mask. Wait, so people were thinking that that mask was uh, was a like a hint to Wrath of Cortex? No, Well, no, people were saying the mask was just a hint to a new Crash game in general, right? Well, yeah. Right. And I, I and I was like, oh, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Why would they put it in there? Why wouldn't they put Uka Uka or Aku Aku? Why would they put this lunar moon mask? Right. And yeah, it makes sense that they're doing it as a little tease, as a little like, oh, oh did you catch that? Right. Um, But if this was true and this was a Wrath of Cortex remaster, because the Wrath of Cortex, there's a whole bunch of different masks. Right. Yeah. And they all I think there's like five five or six yeah. and they're they're just the bosses yeah 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 they're different elemental masks and they take over crunch and crunch gets a different uh super ability do depending on the mask here's the thing none of the masks look like this lunar mask oh no so not this, at all so if this lunar mask is going to be in the next crash game it ain't no no it's not it, that's not from Wrath of Cortex. Yeah, Number and I two, doubt that they would remake the game and just add one new mask. Like, oh, look at that bonus content. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Number two. Number two. Um, if you look, uh, remember when Toys for Bob did that uh, backpack uh, thing and they took a photo and they did an oopsie doopsie no no? Do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the little leak like, oh, it's like yeah. concept art. Yeah, it's concept art. One of the concept arts was Mutant Embryo. Here's the thing. Embryo never shows up in Wrath of Cortex. Oh, you're wait, wait, wait. wait. Embryo wait, never he... shows up. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah and not okay. to mention mutant. And so not only does mutant embryo not show up, embryo is not even there. So <laughs> why would you? Why would you draft concept art of embryo for a, a for in a game that's not even there? And there were also uh, there's another character that's kind of blocked, but you can't see. It's a brand new, unique character that is not similar to any of the other characters in. Uh, Crash Bandicoot's world. Yeah, so it, it seems like everything is just working against this 100% right. Wrath of Cortex leak. Right. And now, to the next step, did you know that the Insane Trilogy was made in a little under two years? Did you know that? I, I feel like I did, but that's yeah. still shocking. Yeah, that's still shocking, and they were running a skeleton crew of about 40 people to make it. Good God. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Acti- do you think Activision like just didn't believe that that was going to take off? Well, no, no, they didn't. They, they, they were just like, it was a deal made between PlayStation and Activision. And then Activision was just like, all right, I guess we'll do it. So they did it. And um, they were able to get all the source stuff from Naughty Dog. And that's why they were able to really produce it really quickly because they had all the source codes. So they were like, all right, well, we'll just rebuild it from the ground up and go from there. Right. And basically what happened was that they were able to produce it in a relatively good amount of time. And when the game took off and blew up, that's when they were like, hey, we could capitalize on this, and they turned to Spyro, right? Yeah. And that's when they made the Reignite Trilogy. But here's the thing. They were able to make the Insane Trilogy the way it was in two years' time with a small skeleton crew. The length of Wrath of Cortex is almost identical to Crash 3. It's Crash 3.5. Yeah. It's just it's okay. just Crash 3 again, but bad. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing, is that cra- it's it's almost the same game as Crash 3. You could argue maybe a little longer. You could argue a little longer. But here's the thing. Uh, on the look at the scope. 
they they were able to remake three games for the insane trilogy in less than two years and you're telling me that one equivalently sized game took three years and more than the 40 people that worked before because they have a lot they expanded the studio and made sure that there was enough people for this project you're telling me that it was a ps2 remake this whole time wow like okay so let's say hypothetically um like activision holds their own digital event for a reason that we're gonna get into here in a sec uh and they say oh here's your favorite marsupial crash bandicoot what is it bam wrath the cortex remake do you think the because i know the fan base on of crash is pretty divisive on wrath the cortex but it's all generally eh. do you think if this gets announced the uh, fan base is just going to be overwhelmingly, uh, or are they going to be like, uh, you know, uh, it could uh, be good. I, I, I think, personally, I think that a lot of people are going to be very angry. And that's I will be not, disappointed. Not, yeah, I think it's a massive disappointment because here's the thing. The last Crash Bandicoot game that we had gotten um, that was brand new, I believe, was 2018 or no 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 sorry 2008 2008 2000 which was mind over mutant um it, it was either that or um i don't know which came first it was either mind over mutant oh no no no, no. this was after mind over mutant uh the mobile game crash nitro kart 3d <laughs> yeah well that, that's kind not, of yeah, yeah. I, i'm meaning like a console game we haven't yeah. had a brand new console game for over a decade, we're in the ranges of it's between like between 12 and 15 years that we've had a brand spanking new Crash Bandicoot experience from the ground up. And you're telling me that they want to do another remake. And then on top of that, on top of that, according to this person's plan, Crash would be also come out in 2021 as well, which would mean that we would see Spyro in 2022. Either that, or they're gonna like sandwich Spyro between these two Crash games in such a small time frame, which would completely break the Activision pattern that we all know about. Yeah, maybe yeah. they're doing another pattern. I don't. It, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just there is so many things pointing to debunk this. Now, the the running theory that I'm going with is that there are elements from Wrath of Cortex, like inspired, like multiple masks, maybe crunches the secret weapon again. Um, and if that's the case, that's fine. Oh, yeah, there's also one other leak. Uh, do you remember the Sabi and Viewer Anon leak? Wait, 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 one more time, sorry. Okay, do you remember the Sabi and Viewer Anon leak? I may have, but I just don't remember the name. Okay, so Sabi and Viewer Anon were not related to each other. They're both leakers. Sabi is a okay. bit sketchy. It, he's leaked some stuff before, but he's got sources. It's weird with Sabi, but another guy he's really confirmed. Viewer Anon's big thing is that he leaked uh, one of the Star Wars entire scripts and the Justice League script. Oh my so, god! <laughs> he, he know he, he knows his stuff. He knows his people. And Viewer Anon came out of nowhere and said, "Hey, talking about or I think it was Sabi first. Sabi came forward and said that he had gotten news." about a Crash Bandicoot game coming out, and one of the features that you could do is you could play as Cortex setting up the level, like, you know, doing shenanigans and destroying the area before Crash gets there. Oh, so you would know how the level uh, was, was set, set up, up. And everything. right? Right. You know, cra- you know, you know, you know, Cortex doing his shenanigans, turning creatures into evil, creating pits and stuff like that, and doing little, like little story based missions in the point of view of Cortex. Now, Sabi came forward and said that not like 20 minutes or less than an hour later, viewer Anon pops up and says, oh, yeah, hopping over to a new industry. I talked with someone today and said and he said the exact same thing. And they were oh, unrelated yeah. to each other. They never followed each other or anything. Now, that action of playing as Cortex was never a thing in Wrath of Cortex. No, it was... I think the only time he played as Cortex was Twin Sanity, and God knows right. we're not having a Twin Sanity remake. Yeah. So so we got a brand new mask that we've never seen before, uh, embryo and mutant embryo and new characters and concept art, the idea and concept of remaking a Wrath of Cortex game within the span of three years, and the fact that two previous known leakers have said different information at the exact same time and unrelated to each other. 
and none of that matches a remake or remaster, I I just I can't buy it. I don't no, buy it. I, I can't either. Uh, I I just I don't know, man. This it's it's weird hearing this leaker say a hundred percent yes, this is Wrath of Cortex. Everything is working against it. There is no feasible reason for this to be Wrath of Cortex, unless unless everything that we've seen so far, leak included, is for the PvP game, which I also highly doubt. Um, yeah, I, I, and I also highly doubt that. We we know something's happening because uh all of the, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm sure you have, but all of the Crash voice actors have been posting a lot recently yes. about being in the booth and also they're doing like hashtag Crash Bandicoot and the voice actors are chilling together. So they're yeah. doing something and the voice work for a platforming game like this is usually done near the very end of the stages because right now you don't need it. You know, it's a platformer yeah. unless unless it's story heavy, but um, it, like for Crash, yeah, that's usually the last part. Because you just had to fill in the gaps, so oh, something's yeah. something's getting announced like soon. Yeah, some something's happening soon. When is that something? We don't know. Which we're gonna move on to the next big thing. Remember how I literally jokingly said that everything is canceled? I'm only half joking, but also not really. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I, E3 I got know, canceled. E3, E3 got canceled. That was. Uh, oh. I don't know. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Yeah. E3, the gaming show that we have watched for years, is canceled. Yeah. Um. So E3, like not E3, but uh, multiple news outlets just came out and said, yes, E3 is canceled. Um, yeah. And it's weird because last time we talked about E3, the higher up said, yeah, we're continuing to try to make the show as best as possible. They were trying to cover themselves. They knew something was happening. And now... As of today, no E3 for 2020, which is really upsetting, uh, but probably the best thing because I'm pretty sure no one would have watched it with how everything was going down. And it, they said, yes, E3 2021 is going to be a thing, but we're going to be focusing more on a digital event if this keeps right. if this keeps up, which... Oh boy, if E3 goes digital, if they do like a giant Nintendo Direct, that's just going to take the fun out of... E3 like it was so much fun seeing it live this was like yeah. our this was our thing you would either sneak it while you're at work or take off at school and just watch this whole thing play out for like what four days right yep it was four days of constant just great video game greatness and it was fantastic and to see it gone is just something that's I, I, don't I, I can't put it into words gone. Yeah, and of course, like we said, this is because of the coronavirus. Like, everything else is getting... Like, we said South by Southwest was canceled. GDC mm -hmm. got delayed. E3 mm -hmm. is now canceled. Um, uh -huh. But so every every company that was going to be at E3, like Square Enix and Capcom and uh, Microsoft, they're all going to be doing digital events. So if you want yep. to know what was going to be announced... For, during E3, probably more info on the Xbox Series X or yeah, Series X or PS5. They're mm -hmm. going to be doing events. Probably not PS5 because Sony has not said anything about a digital event yet. Everyone yeah. else is. Yeah, it's just like come on, seriously. But it, it's something that is just absolutely heartbreaking to see. But everything's getting canceled left, right, and center. Everything, like we mean everything. Uh, like not even just events. Stores are shutting stores. down. Stores are shutting down. Schools are um, shutting. Yeah, schools are shutting down. Um, everything is shutting down. So we don't know what's happening. We have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, like this could all impact uh, this whole thing. This whole coronavirus might even impact the announcement and release and development of. Uh, CTR or Crash Bandicoot and whatever else, right? It literally can yeah. delay that because they're trying to prevent people from getting into large groups of gatherings and stuff. And if anyone gets sick, it's like, okay, if you get sick, even if it's just a cough, it's self quarantine for two weeks, right? Yeah. And um. I don't know, dude. It. So I wanted to. I don't know if I told you this, but um. For everyone, I'm sure everyone knows by now, but I work at a game store, and I was in the back of the store doing this guy's uh, trade, and he wanted to trade in some games, and I was like, ah, how you doing, man? And he was like, uh, you know, 
not too good. I might be jobless soon. And how, you know, being me being me, I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> you want to fill me in, I guess. Cause you're probably going to fill me in. And he was like, yeah, uh, I work at the, uh, AMC movie theater and, um, they're talking about, uh, shutting it down for a little bit cause of the coronavirus. So I might be jobless for uh, about two weeks to a month, maybe three months. And I was like, are you kidding me? Really? They're, they're shutting, they're planning to shut down a movie theater. Yeah. What? What? Well, and they're delaying movies left, right, and center. Yeah. Uh. The I forget. I forget the director's name, but I I, I know him. But the director for A Quiet Place Part Two, he said he's delaying yep. the movie, and yep. his reasoning was really nice. He said, "I want to delay it because I want everyone to be able to watch it together. I don't. I don't want. Yeah. I want everyone to experience this movie at the same time, which is really good. That's uh, like yeah. I understand it's good for financial reasons, but that's a really good moral reason. And the big dude, we were talking about this earlier. Fast and Furious Nine got delayed <laughs> a year. Like wow. I don't even care about the movie franchise. A year. A year delay. Like the and movie was probably already done. Like. It's already filmed, done, and in the can, and ready to go, and they're delaying it for a year. Like, could you imagine all the merchandise that they had planned, all the third-party licensing? Could you imagine all this stuff now just down the drain? Like, oh yeah, pause. Uh, you gotta wait a year now. Uh, everyone, the, everyone on the crew is like, oh, I can't wait for my family to see my first movie. Well, yeah, well, never mind. No, th- that's not happening. It's like. Nope, that's not happening. And what's hilarious too is that James Bond also got delayed due to the coronavirus, and it's getting ridiculous. It is get, everything is getting canceled. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see wh- like when is it going to get let up? When is it going yeah. to all release? Because this we society can't run like this for a long long period of time, right? It it just it can't. Ugh. Yeah, I I don't I don't know how much longer like I don't know how much longer businesses can handle this because um the mall that the store the game store I work at is in we've like we've been extremely slow the past couple days because of this and the mall ha- like they're not showing signs of shutting down we've gotten mm-hmm. memos from the office that say hey wash your hands like that, that's <laughs> it that all they said is like hey we're we're looking at the situation uh wash your hands. Don't be an idiot. All right, cool. The worst thing that got canceled at the mall was they canceled the Easter Bunny photo op, and oh, everyone no. was like, "Everyone was like, oh no, uh, who cares?" Um, <laughs> but I, I think that's I think that's the worst of it for us, at least. I just mm-hmm. the, the thing is the like I hate I I feel like such a yeah I, I can't I can't trust the media, but honestly, <laughs> yes, the the media is blowing this way out of proportion. The mm-hmm. whole toilet paper fiasco oh don't dude, even get me started my on this. god like like i'm sure i know it was different for you but for me we walked into target and it's like man all the paper towels and toilet paper are gone but all the food is still here like you got your guys' priorities are in the completely wrong direction yeah i don't understand so if literally if like okay if the apocalypse was about to happen and you had to wipe your butt okay <laughs> What do I do? <laughs> what, what do you do? You know what you do? You would you would use a cloth. You would use a or whatever, right? In the Go event of an apocalypse, right? Uh, if you had to, if it is yeah. what it is, if you had to, okay. Are you gonna pick toilet paper or food? <laughs> like, dude, one pack, <laughs> one twenty-four pack could probably last a small family for like what, maybe two months. Maybe. Something like that, two three well, months if you're lucky. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But here's the thing: people are buying like twenty packs of toilet paper. Yeah, twenty like, packs each. <laughs> and it's like, why? Why? Like, okay, so for example, today we went to um today uh I went to uh a little store called Zares in Canada, and we were just like, okay, I'm going to go check to see if they have toilet paper. Just for, you know, fun. Just to see. And we we went, and of course, they were sold out. 
But some, I was, I looked and I was like, all right. And it was pretty much chaos in there. So I was about to leave and I didn't need the toilet paper. It was for my parents because my parents had ran out of toilet paper during a natural time of running out of toilet paper and were requesting just one pack of toilet paper, like normal human beings. Yeah. You know, that's fair. Yeah. Uh huh. Because <laughs> there's no way that you could poop anywhere of amount to needing to buy three packs of toilet paper. That's just, no, that's insane. So. We, I start walking back, and a lady, I could see a cashier, somebody had apparently put it back, was walking down the toilet paper aisle to put it back on the shelf. And so I turned around, I thought, okay, great, there's a 12-pack there. I'll just grab a 12-pack for my mom and dad. And I turn around, I go to reach for it, and this guy, like a rabid raccoon, grabs it and runs like, grabs it, clutches in his arms like he was just given a suitcase of a million dollars, basically hissed at us and ran. And everyone <laughs> just, like, looked at each other. There was four people in the aisle. It was like, nah, it's my toilet paper. Mine! And it's just like, <laughs> what are you doing? And the guy goes running, and there's, like, four of us. We all look at each other in the aisle like, did you just see that? Did you, did you see that? So we had to go to, like, five different stores to find toilet paper. I was like, there's no, there's no toilet paper. There's no toilet paper anywhere. My parents are almost 60 and I'm trying to help them out. So we're, I'm getting angry and I'm like, you know what? I'm upset. I'm going to treat myself. I have been on a diet and I'm going to go get myself a steak. I'm going to go make mm, cook myself yeah. some steak, make myself feel a little bit better, you know, cause it's been rough. I walk into my local supermarket. There, there's no meat. There's no meat. <laughs> Nothing. There, there, no there's meat nothing. At all. Like I posted it on Twitter. If you want to guys go check it out on Canadian guy a with an extra H at that hashtag, go check it out. Literally no meat. There, there's nothing. And I'm like, there's literally no beef. And the beef that they do have is, oh yeah, we got beef bones. Oh yes, go- delicious. Mm, mm, I I love chewing on beef bones for dinner. Mm, d- great. Mulch it up into a, a meal, please, in the food processor while you break the blades in it. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like, really? That's what you have left is beef bones. And there's no ground meat. There was also no ground meat. I, if you wanted a taco salad, you would have taco salad sans hamburger. And th- there's uh, nothing. No, dude. I don't. So I, I don't know. It's. It's so weird. Like, at most, like, we've, it, it's gotten to the point to where the, um, I think the mayor, I think, of our, of our county came out and said, guys, <sighs> chill out. Like, there is no need for you guys to be acting like this. Just oh, yeah. buy regular toilet paper and regular amounts of food for your family, like, <laughs> reasonably. Stop bullying people over toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Um, there is like as we're as we're recording this, there mm-hmm. is uh some good news amidst all this, which I just sent you. I don't, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I did read about it earlier that yeah. the the spread of uh the the spread of the virus in China is almost like stopped. Yeah. So here's a a tweet from at Redfish. Redfish Stream, who, okay, they um they have a story that says Chinese medical workers who have been fighting the coronavirus day and night in Wuhan celebrated the closing of the last temporary hospital in Wuhan. The mm. reported uh, COVID nineteen cases went from a surge in February of fifteen thousand in one day to only fifteen this week, which is fantastic. Which is huge, like down, down. F- that's really good. That's that's a, that's a really good uh, percentage. That that is very very good, and I'm very happy to hear about that. Just the uh, problem is right now is Italy. <laughs> Italy, yeah, I, Italy, Iran, uh, Turk, anything in Europe. But I saw you're lucky uh, that in Canada they found a way to isolate the virus. Mm-hmm. Canada has been uh, actually, which is kind of funny. Canada is the first ones to create a vaccine for uh, the coronavirus. They're the very first ones. They are putting it in clinical trial as we speak. Uh, 
it was out in Saskatchewan, and someone made a joke because you, you, how I literally said everything was canceled. I'm that's a common thing. Uh, the NBA was canceled, the NCAA canceled, NFL canceled. If it was a sporting event, canceled. Canceled. Um, and the NHL, the National Hockey League, was canceled. And someone made a tweet said. Uh, of course, when the National Hockey League goes uh, offline, <laughs> Canada <laughs> figures out a cure to the to a world pandemic. <laughs> oh God, what are we gonna do? Uh, cure it fast! Cure it fast! So yeah, and they're they're doing really good, and uh, I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy to see that. Um, I just this coronavirus. I hope like. I hope two weeks from now, we're on the up and up of it. We're like, okay, yeah, it's still a thing, but people have calmed down. People have, you know, relaxed with the toilet paper. And I hope, I hope, by the way, last thing before we go, there was someone that literally posted that they were selling packs of hand sanitizer for $750. Yeah, I saw that and I, I, yeah, you tweeted on for eBay. Yeah, someone was selling a, uh, like a regular pack of toilet paper on eBay for $55 plus $5 shipping. And it, it said like, uh, oh, 133 people looking at this. Um, but the the last thing I want to say is I know we've been talking about a lot of bad news. Uh, yeah. But let's wrap it up with some good news. Hey, guess what? Yeah. Animal Crossing comes out next week. Yeah, and it's unfortunately it comes out on the day we record the podcast. But you you know I'm gonna be playing that before we start the podcast. Oh yeah, totally. It's gonna be like me trying to talk to Shep and yeah. Hold on a second. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> My fiance oh. took off a, a whole day from work so she could play Animal <laughs> Crossing. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, my, my wife, you know, she's been feeling kind of crummy and stuff. I said, hey, does it make you feel better that Animal Crossing is coming out next week? And there's a pause, and I hear, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Now, I don't know if you get this, but in America at least, uh, if you guys didn't know, if you go by Animal Crossing at Target, you will get a free Animal Crossing uh, journal slash planner. Yeah, it's a planner with like a, with like a calendar in it. It's not Animal Crossing themed, and if you buy it at Best Buy, you get a free uh, Animal Crossing bag that looks like a bag of bells from the game. Uh, I'm I'm sure you have Best Buy in Canada. We do, but we don't ever get the pre order bonuses over here. Um, uh, remember well, the Spyro Steelbook? Um, that yeah, was well, in Australia. Well, yeah, we never got that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the thing is that it was an EB Games exclusive, and that's what we, what we have. We have EB Games. We we didn't get anything. We got keychains. That's oh, what we got. God. Oh, yeah, we we also got the disgusting keychains. The derpy, the eyes are. Ugh, don't even want to think about that. So last thing, last thing about that. That's kind of funny. We went to PAX, and they were trying to sell that keychain for twelve dollars at one of the booths, and no. I visib- I visibly laughed. I like opened. <laughs> I la- I looked at the price and I just laughed. I was like, "You can't be serious!" It- and the eyes are all crossed and all over. The- it's great. It's They're fantastic. They're giant. And it's like I'm a <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. It's so bad. It's so good. Uh, hopefully, you don't think that our. Ch- we hope that you think Wumpa Time is just good though, because we are yeah. literally everywhere. We are in iTunes, Apple Music. If iTunes is even a thing anymore. Spotify, that's a big thing. We're on Spotify, SoundCloud, you name it, we're there. And you can take a listen to this podcast anywhere on the go with us, with Shemp, which is Shemp Official on Twitter, and <gasps> Canadian Guy A with an extra H. The imposter is still out there. We will find him. And <laughs> we will find him, we will trap him and hunt him down until I can remove my extra H for my name. But anyway, guys, that's all the time we have for today. We know it was a bit of more of a, a negative news but you know what we hope that you were still vastly entertained uh make sure to subscribe for more wumpa time and we can't wait to see you guys next week bye